It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I appreciate the spirit of the Lord that I feel. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. I want to make a few announcements real quickly. This Saturday morning, starting at 8 o'clock, it's going to be men's work day. Can I get all the men to say amen? We're going to meet here at 8 o'clock, eat some breakfast. Amen. If you can, this is not mandatory. I just sure appreciate every man that can show up. So if you know some that aren't here tonight, call them. Anybody, anybody smiling? <clears throat> Are you glad to be a church that's busy? Amen. Tuesday night prayer meetings, Wednesday night Bible studies. I believe our youth are starting to meet on Monday night for prayer because they wanted to, to, they said it worked better with all their schedules. Amen. We got youth events happening September the 5th in Paraland. Times of refreshing is coming up in Katy, September, I believe it's 11th and 12th. So there's lots of things going on coming up in the months to come. And uh, I'm thankful that we can be a part of it. I want my life to be centered around the church. If I can keep busy in the church, then I have less time to play in the world. Well, praise God. 2 Corinthians 9 and 3. And the word of God reads, Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready, lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we that we should say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully every man according as he purpose in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for god loveth a cheerful giver i'm just going to talk about the cheerful giver tonight lord jesus i thank you for being in the house and I ask, Lord God, that you'd anoint these lips of clay, anoint every ear to hear, bring understanding to our mind. Help us, Lord, today to grow in you and your word. And we know, Lord, that it will not return void. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. I just want to talk about the cheerful giver. You can be seated tonight. You know, when, when uh, we start talking about finances and money, most people... Amen. Uh, tend to tighten up a little bit. And, you know, they're, they tend to close down and close their mind. But I say open your mind tonight. And be open to the word and be open to the spirit of the Lord. I, I'm not up here uh, talking about, uh, you know, I'm not going to say uh, you don't give, you, you're going to hell. I'm not going to say that. But when you don't give, you miss out on a great opportunity to experience the blessings of the Lord. Giving is a part of who we are as Christians. Now, we always talk about the fiscal giving, and that's very important. But giving of your time is important. Being a cheerful giver of your time is important. Amen. Coming to church with the right attitude is important. Amen. Giving of your labor is important. Amen. Praise God. I'm getting excited because it's getting cooler. Amen. And I've already had people talking about peanut brittle. Well, praise God. And I don't know if I'm excited because we sell. I think I'm excited because we make it. And, uh, but you know what? It's, it's an attitude in labor. And I've talked about that in the past. That, amen, however you do something, however you give to something, 
amen, is what gets God's attention. Amen. Amen. God wants individuals who are cheerful givers. Now, it'd be it's hard and, and I don't I won't do this often. I I don't have a, a candy stick message about tithing and offerings that, uh, you know, I want to hammer on it all the time. I do think it's something that we need to touch base with about once, twice a year to remind the saints of the blessings of giving. Now, Deuteronomy 14 and 22 lets us know thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And so in the writings, he he gives a uh, proclamation that you shall truly tithe all the increase of your seed. Why? That the field bringeth forth year by year. Amen. And so it, there's a, a principle here that is established and a precedent that is, is, that is established that when I tithe, when I give that 10%, for that is a tithe, it's a tenth of, and when I give that 10%, amen, it is is allowing me to guarantee through God that the field that I labor in is going to prosper. Now, then in that day and age, you have to understand, and when you read many of these scriptures here, amen, uh, they, they talk of corn and wine and oil and, and flocks and herds and, and all of those things because... They were stewards over that economy. They were very uh, farmer type people, if you let me. They were shepherds. You know, in, in the book of, uh, of Exodus, we know that uh, uh, Egypt hates the shepherd. And that's a message that will preach by itself. But they were tenders of sheep and tenders of oxen and keepers of fields and so amen there may not have been a lot of physical currency of money but the way they survived is i may have sheep and you may have goats or cattle or, or wheat or barley and we would barter and trade because during that time amen it was a very much so the the way of doing business on top of monies and so what they're saying here is if there's a tithe of, amen, you would pay that. You would bring that, amen, to the house of the Lord. Scripture says there, amen, and if you if they shall eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thine wine, of thine oil, and the first of the herd, and of the flocks that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And so, amen. Take it to where the name of the Lord is, to the house of God. Amen. We know that the tithe is for the priesthood, and it is there for their substance. Why? Because they had no inheritance. When they came into the land of promise, they had no inheritance. Their job, amen, was to keep the house of the Lord. Their job was to make the sacrifices. Their job was to go before the Lord year after year for the people. And so they had no inheritance. So God did not leave them out. So the tithe is very important. It helps take care of the priesthood. And it helps take care of the ministry in this day and age. And yet you're not dealing in cattle. Most of us, amen, work for a wage. But at the same time, amen, no matter what we call, we, why, why do we say what career field are you in? The terminology that goes back to the day of the farmer because it was according to what you planted what you got in your field well i'm a i'm a corn farmer or i'm a pea farmer or i'm a peanut farmer or brother salome i'm a cantaloupe farmer with a few tomatoes thrown in but uh that's what we do in this day. What field are you in? Well, I'm an electrician. I'm a carpenter. I'm a, I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a banker. I'm in human... You know, we refer to our fields of labor. And from that, amen, we work and we glean substance to take care of our family. And so, 
Amen. I believe that it's very practical in its relationship from then to now and how it operates. Now, good stewardship does not mean that we become greedy. I believe the Lord wants us to be a cheerful giver. And I'll get into that some more later. Amen. We have to make sure that we don't use stewardship as a way to cop out of being a giver. Well, I'm not. I'm a, I got to take care of this. I got to take care of that. I got to do this. I got to do that. I don't. I can't give to. Well, first of all, I can't give my tithes. Well, you got to be careful. <laughs> and I'll get into that in a minute too, because. You know, it's very important that you establish these things in your life. Brother Lewis teaches his church, there's, you know, you pay your tithes, pay your bills, pay yourself. <laughs> I think that's a good little practice to get into. Because if I pay my tithes right off the top, put God first, everything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And so it's a simple principle, but we got to put it into practice. Because the benefit comes for when I know that I have given, that the Lord will give in return. There's something about faithfulness that God loves. We are managers of the blessings that the Lord has provided unto us. If you were able to give in the offering tonight, it's because the Lord has blessed you with an abundance. And some say, well, I didn't really have it to give, but I gave anyway. Thank you. That's called a sacrifice. And there are those who have given their last $5, $10, $1, $2. $1. But you know what? God doesn't look at the value currency value means nothing to god it doesn't it's the, it's the state of the heart and the attitude in the given because if the lord were to bless you with a million dollars and you pay the tithes on a million dollars of a hundred thousand dollars let's just be truthful that's it's a lot of money but what is it to god what is $100,000 to God? Oh, that little square of the streets of gold? That it. You can have it. <laughs> but really, the reason why a lot of folks don't have more finances is because God can't trust you with more finances. Huh? Because here's the truth. And it's been proven time and time again. It's not necessarily how much you make. It's how you manage it. Because the more you make, the more you spend. The more you make, the more in debt you feel you can get into. There are millionaires that are in debt up to their ears. And though they make millions, amen, they're still filing bankruptcy. There's professional athletes that become millionaires overnight and a year or two after their career ends, they're broke again. Now, I know I'm fixing to walk on some sacred ground and hurt some feelings around here, but I love you anyway. Point in case, there was a particular football player that played for the University of Texas by the name of Vince Young. Don't act like you don't know who I'm talking about. Some of you don't, I'm thankful. But... Uh, you know, he, he was a big-time college player, got a big-time football, millions of dollars, but he allowed his family, one of his uncles, to be his manager. Better be careful who you let manage your money. I promise you, if I get a large amount of money, the only person going to handle it is my wife or a CPA. Because <laughs> I would, well, I don't know if I'd trust the CPA. i trust her. <laughs> But because of bad investments, frivolous spending, amen, you can go out and buy anything you want to buy the more money you make. I mean, it's real easy. Banks love to see people with 
good incomes. But the more that you borrow, the more you are bound by every month. It's true. And so we have to work towards not being a slave to the lender. The word of God lets us know that. That the borrower is slave to the lender. And, you know, everybody understands that feeling when when the house payment comes due or or, or, or the car payment comes due. You know, it's we can't do all this. We've got to pay the bills. And so we have to, amen, to be able to give, be good stewards of our finances. Managers of the blessings that God has given to us. You know, and many times I, I find it funny, and if you'll just allow me for a minute to talk about this, I find it funny that people have a problem paying tithes or paying offerings in the church, and they say that's all the church is about. No, we're not about that. I'm about saving souls. I do understand it takes something to keep the lights on. It does take something, amen, to make this thing operate. Amen. But when everybody does their part, it runs like a smooth old running motor and yet when you're in the world when you were in the world i mean you didn't go into the honky tonk the juke joint or the club did i cover all of them i hope so and uh you know and they and they said tonight's dollar night you know and when you started getting libations or you didn't just say hey give me you know i'm on i'm only going to give a dollar now just give me what a dollar give me <laughs> huh come on we never did that you never always say i just want a dollar's worth and you come to the house of god and say there's my dollar I mean, we're oneness, but we don't have to be oneness in everything. <laughs> I gave my dollar. <laughs> Lord, let it multiply. <laughs> Do it like the loaves and the fishes and let it grow. <laughs> That's what pastors pray lots of times. <laughs> Lord, let them grow. But we, we didn't care. We, if, if you'd gotten paid, you may not even paid your bills. I don't want to hear the testimonies of those that got their paycheck on a Friday, went home on Saturday morning, had to tell your wife, it's gone. Because <laughs> I don't want to go back to those places. <laughs> but no, you walked in there and you said, hey, just start the tab rolling. When I'm done, I'll pay the bill. $30 later, you didn't complain about it. You didn't say, boy, that's inexpensive. No, you said, man, I had a good time. And yet living for God, all the blessings, all the benefits that we have, we should never complain about ever giving. Amen. Giving is a privilege. In Deuteronomy 14 and 22, I want to step back. It says, Thou shalt truly tithe all thine increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year by year. I tithed that already. Tithing is required even for the priest, even for the pastor. I pay tithes. Just want you to know. Brother Bumgarner pays his tithes. I pay my tithes into our district every month. And there's a scripture for that. In Nehemiah 10 and 35, they they bring him back the word and to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees year by year unto the house of the Lord. Also the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle as it is written in the law and the firstlings of our herds and of our flocks to bring to the house of our God unto the priests that minister in the house of our God and that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and of our offerings the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine, and of oil unto the priest, to the chambers of the house of our God, and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites may have the tithes in all the cities of our tillage. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites, when the Levites take tithes, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes 
unto the house of our God, to the chambers, into the treasure house. And so, you know, thank the Lord that the folks of Peace Tabernacle labor and you're faithful in your tithing. I thank God for that. But understand that when you tithe, I tithe. Amen. And we bless this thing called the United Pentecostal Church and it helps take care of other brethren that are in, like Brother Gurley and and Brother Johnson. And and even though they have churches, you know, those funds go into uh, coffers that take care of different uh, needs within the church body. And it all starts with one faithful saint of God saying, you know what, I'm going to give my first fruits as unto the Lord. But, you know, sometimes we think it stops right here with us. But when you give, it blesses the ministry of Peace Tabernacle. The ministry of Peace Tabernacle gives, and it blesses the ministry of the United Pentecostal Church. And the United Pentecostal Church gives, and it blesses the world. It spreads this gospel everywhere. So anytime you give, never think that, hey, you know, my dollar doesn't go somewhere. Sometimes it's your dollar. Just think with me. Hey, man, it can travel all the way to some foreign place because... You were faithful in just your tithing. So I'm talking about being a cheerful giver. Now, in speaking of giving tonight, we we have to remember the tithe. Why? Malachi 3 and 8, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to Receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Now there's a strong principle here tonight. The Lord is rebuking them because they did not pay their tithes. All of them. All of them. The nation. Well, can somebody say amen? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. He did not single out individuals. He singled out a whole nation. According to Malachi 3 and 9. So he says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. God said, prove me. Prove me. Even though God was telling them, you're a bunch of thieves. Well, that's what you call a robber. You're a bunch of thieves. But I tell you what. If you'll bring your tithe to the storehouse and put meat in mine house and prove me, not whether with, herewith saith the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Amen. And pour you out a blessing. You know what's some of the most wonderful things to see? I love it when there is an individual that doesn't come to church but they still pay their tithes. Because they understand that one principle. Now, they may not understand being faithful to the house of God. They may not understand living for God, but they understand this one thing. If I pay my tithes, that what I labor in, God can bless me. And people believe that now. I have a pastor friend. When he started pastoring, there was an individual that hadn't graced the door of a church. And he said he didn't remember how long. But as soon as he started this home missions church, man calls him up and says, Look, I'm going to start paying my tithes to you. Couldn't get him to come to church, but he could get him to pay his tithes. 
Because the man understood the principle of giving tithe. And that when you do, amen, it opens up the windows of heaven in your life for God to pour out a blessing, amen, on you. I'm thankful tonight that God, amen, I've left room for God to be able to open the windows of heaven for me. Amen. And you can't tell me that he doesn't. We could have a testimony service tonight, and, and I, I, we wouldn't have time to, to, to continue service because, amen, we could go the remaining part of service of people telling me how God has blessed them when they were being faithful to him in tithe and offering. Am, am, I, am I not telling the truth? Now, I know this isn't shouting Sunday night, but you can't get back up. You can get back up and live for God and give you tithes. Amen. It's not because, amen, the preacher wants your tithes. Amen. It's because it sets a precedence between you and the Lord. Elder Briggs, man in my life, he said, the only way for God to put something into your hands is for it to be open. And he says, you can't give. If your hand's not open. <laughs> he said, so when I open my hand to give, I keep it open so God can give it back. <laughs> what he was teaching there is a principle. Yes, I am going to give. I'm going to cheerfully give it. And I'm going to keep my, own, my hands upraised, my hands open to God for whatever he wants to do in me. You know, God is not against us. God is for us. I mean, he even says in his word that, amen, he would open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And then he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, God wants to turn our lives around from the desolate, from the broken. Amen. He doesn't just want to save us, fill us full of the Holy Ghost, and leave us in a place of not being blessed. Now, I'm not just going, I'm not up here just preaching a, you know, a prosperity doctrine. I'm preaching a biblical principle of giving. Amen. When you give and you don't expect God to just, Give it back in return. He does it anyway. He does it in many fashions. He gives you promotions on jobs. He gives you raises you didn't expect. Huh? And then sometimes you've been faithful and all of a sudden your world turns upside down. Can I, can I encourage you tonight? Don't worry about that. If you have been faithful... In your giving with the right attitude. Amen. You don't have to worry about where your finances are going to come from. Now, there are those that do. But you need to start walking in faith. You can remind the Lord, Lord, now I've been faithful. And here are my needs. I know some folks write down their needs every month saying, Lord, Here's what I have need of this month, and I need you to supply my needs. Do you know he'll do it? Now, I, I know Mr. Mike will be here next week. He'll get more into budgets and stuff. And, and, and I'm going to be, I've not really been a budgeter in my life. It gives me a headache. Sister Brandy gave us a class. I think she may do another one soon, but, you know... Sitting down there and trying to do a budget. Uh, uh, it just. Because you have to. Push everything into. Now I get the tie. That's 10%. That's easy. You know that's 10% off the top. Hey no problem. Everything else. But you know God doesn't really matter. Care about the 10% that you give. He does care about the 90%. That he leaves you in charge of. Is that right? Now, I will tell you this, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to, uh, to shift gears more into giving, but the truth is there's not a tithe police. 
There is no tithe police. I was reading an article about Saudi Arabia this week. And over there, they have a morality police. In fact, a woman was getting 50 lashes. And her business shut down for a couple of months. Because she had been disrespectful to the morality police. You better thank God where you live and the freedom you have. I won't get into all that, but you know what? We don't have a tithing police to go around and say, well, if you don't pay your tithes, that's it. Huh? Because you know what? It's not really about the individual who receives them. Now you think about this. Really, when you give a tithe between you and the Lord. Now, you can give with two things. There's two parts of our being that we give with. Can anybody name them? It's kind of a teaching thing tonight. Can anybody name them? What'd you say? Heart. What else? Your mind. Somebody said mind. So, but now, if you give with your heart, you tend to be more liberal. Huh? I mean, you know, them little cuties come up and they say, Brother Bumgarner, will you buy some chocolate? We know if you eat it, it'll kill you, but will you buy some? Absolutely. <laughs> Die young, make a pretty corpse. You know, well, you, I'm buying with my heart. But, you know, there's times when, you know, when you're making a purchase, you've got to buy with your mind. I tend to, before I make any big purchase, I study it out. I, if it's an automobile or something, I'm studying mileage and, and performance, and I'm looking at reviews, and I'm, I'm checking out, you know, how many passions it'll have, and then, I do this silly stuff, and, and, you know, I'm thinking, what can I get out of this? What's the performance of it? And But you know what? That's a mind purchase. And you go in there, and you negotiate with them. You're not negotiating with your heart. Huh? You go in and negotiate with them, folks. You, gotta be, you better be with your mind. I don't care how much you fall in love with that thing. You better make sure it's with your mind and not your heart, because you're going to be driving it for a little while. <laughs> That's a mind purchase. And you're not just going to shell out money just because it's got to make sense. Everything's got to be right in your mind. The terms have got to be ones that you can agree with. You know, the quick the car salesman wants to be slick and he'll come out and, you know, he'll he'll write a big wait. Don't tell Jerry I'm talking about. This. But <laughs> you know, he'll he'll write a figure on a piece of paper and slide it over. I think this is where we can get to. I always like to just put a mark through it and drop it about a thousand and say, no, nah, this is about where I want to get to. And then they go, oh, I don't know, man. Yeah. Let me go talk to my manager. And then they go back and they get around the water cooler and they talk about, you know, this or that. And <laughs> then they come back. and, But you know what? That's all mind. It's not heart. And in living for God, we have to... To give both with the unity of our mind and our heart. We give from an understanding in our mind that here's the reason I'm giving. Now, if I take a mind offering, I'll tend to get less than I do with a heart offering. Amen? But, you know, let me show Tupelo's children's mansion and have those kids come down here and, you know, and... Won't somebody please love me? And I mean, mamas are pulling out savings and grandmas are, are going and getting their grandkids' closets and cleaning out 50 dresses that they bought them that they ain't wore but one time and sending everything to Tupelo. Why? Because it becomes a matter of a heart. And in our giving, we have to make sure, amen, that we're honest with the Lord. Yeah. 
Because he knows. And no matter what we say or how we just, God knows whether or not we're 100% giving according to the way he wants us to give. We cannot think that what we have belongs to us. It belongs to the Lord. When you're a steward, you have to remember, what I have belongs to the Lord. My house belongs to the Lord. I am a steward of my house. Now, if that house is your house, then God will say, fine, you take care of it. But if you leave it in God's hands, you have a lot less problems. I'm just being truthful. When that automobile, that's not my automobile, that belongs to the Lord. Amen? And the thing is, is you know how you can tell if, you're, if it's yours or God's? Let something happen to it. Now, if you get all bent out of shape and angry and mad and fussing and cussing. Then it's not God's, it's yours. But if something happens to it and you say, Lord, thank you for the time I had of using that. I appreciate it. Now, you say, Brother Bumgarner, you are off your rocker. I probably am. And I, I don't know if this was handed down to me, uh, you know, but I really do believe that what I have belongs to the Lord. Everything. I am a steward because I didn't come into this world with anything, and I will not leave this world with anything. But if I can be a, hair, uh, 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 a steward over what God has given me, then I can pass on a heritage and an inheritance to my children. We have to, amen, be careful how we give and what manner we give. Amen. It's very easy if we're blessed to go around telling everybody how blessed we really are. But let me just take you to the Word of God and remind you, Matthew 6 and 1, hey, Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Amen? Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. So who do you want to get glory from in your giving? Do you want everybody to know how much you give? Do you want everybody to know what you're the one that gave to this or you're the one that gave to that? Be careful. Because if you do, you, you received your glory right then. And God has a way of giving us a lot more glory than, than what men can give us. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And so we know that Amen. There is a benefit to giving an alms, a offering. There is a benefit to that. And when we do it in the right way, not broadcasting it all over everywhere. Amen. But giving it as unto the Lord. God says, you know what? Since you did it in the right way, I can bless you. Even more. Even more. Tithing. Is for the priesthood. Offerings were for the tabernacle. A tithe is the first fruit of what you have gleaned from a field of labor. Offerings are given free will. And there's lots of offerings we can get into tonight. I'm not going to get into all the many different offerings. But I'm going to talk about the offering of the tabernacle. The upkeep of the tabernacle. Specific needs that are within the church. Amen. So when we give offerings, amen, offerings take care of the church. They take care of needs within the church, ministries, missionaries. Amen. So when we take an offering on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, amen, those offerings go to keep the lights on. Amen. That $700 light bill we got this month. You took care of it. We can praise God. 
Amen. You know, pay for insurance. <laughs> it comes up throughout the year. But, you know, so don't, don't think that when you give, it's in vain or it does not matter. It matters. Amen. We're giving, and I'm just... I, Felt like I needed to just give some figures tonight, so you you would have some ideas of, of of what we give to and things that we do. Amen. You know our missions. I believe it's roughly four hundred fifty five hundred dollars a month that we give to foreign missionaries. Is that right? That's just the church, and then we have individuals who have taken on missionaries. Amen. And and the church gets credit for that too. And and roughly between those it. The church and then those that have taken on mission. This church right here gives about $1,000 a month to foreign missions. That's a lot of foreign missionaries that Peace Tabernacle supports. I think you can give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know, this does matter. But God cares about the attitude that you give. In Exodus 35, a man in five, I'm trying to hurry. He says, take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his services and for the holy garments. And they came both men and women. I'm, I'm skipping down to verse 21. Is he keeping up with me? Man, he's good. Amen. And they came both men and women, as many as were willing hearted and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets and jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered offerings of gold unto the Lord. Verse 24, everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering, and every man with whom was found Shittim wood for any work of the service brought it. Verse 29, the children of Israel brought a willing offering. Everybody say a willing offering unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work, which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. And then verse uh, Exodus 36 and 3. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it with all. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Now this was on top of the tithe. This was an offering. But you know what? God was blessing them. Amen. And they brought so much that they had to be told to stop. And many times in Scripture, when they would take up an offering, they'd open up the chest, and the people would come, and they would just keep filling and keep filling and keep filling and keep filling. But they understood, if God commanded the offering, we're going to be the ones to receive the blessing. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Somebody look at your neighbor and smile. Some of y'all tired. <laughs> Amen. You're just tired. But you know, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. Don't be the one that says, well, if I have to give, I guess we'll give. And really, I should probably be preaching this on a Sunday morning when everybody's here. But I'll preach it on a Wednesday night because I love you too. <laughs> or of necessity. The only reason I'm giving is because I want to get something back. The only reason I'm giving is because I'm trying to get something in return. The only reason I'm giving is because I'm trying to impress somebody. For God loveth a cheerful giver. I wish I could show it. I saw a video clip here recently. 
of a man giving in an offering. It must have been a Kojic church or a missionary Baptist, one of those. Because the usher stood at the front of the church holding the pan. And the music was playing. And it was that get down, hallelujah, shout music. And this man, everybody was coming up and giving you their offering. And this man was up there. And you can find it for yourself. And he was dancing, cutting a rug, sliding, James Browning, spinning around, falling on his back, getting up, had his offering up, dance, shouting. Having a good time. I mean, we're talking about giving an offering. And when it was the right moment, he walked over there and popped that offering in. And I mean, it was like something hit him. And he, wow, you know. <laughs> but you think about an attitude. I mean, when, when, when it comes to offering times, and I'm just going to be, when it comes to offering times, everybody gets serious. Hmm. I'll just encourage you, have, a, have your offering predetermined before you come to church. Put it in the budget. Amen, just put it in your budget. That way you know what you're going to give. And, amen, and, and that way you, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about spending it. And you can be a cheerful giver when you give it. Amen. But you know what? He, he might have been so happy. That he had something to give. You know, but what happens is when you live in an abundance of things, you don't appreciate when you have just a little to give. That's what made the woman with the might so powerful in the Word of God. There were those that had come giving offerings. Amen. And it, to them, it was out of their overflow, their abundance, you know. Oh, I can give a few shekels. It ain't going to. It ain't going to take away from my bread. It's not going to take away from my, my eating, my drinks, you know, you know. It's not going to take away from that new camel I want to buy. I went in scripture times, you know. I'm talking about when they bought camels and chariots. In our day and age, it would be a new Chevrolet. You know, my father and all of his funny songs, you know, he wrote a song that says, Indians no longer ride painted ponies. It's Dodge, Fords, and Chevrolets. Some of y'all just got that. <laughs> That's right. We don't, but you know what? That woman, she gave everything. And can I tell those tonight that when you're living on a tight budget and you give, you know, when you give to the Lord, and I know that, you know, you're, you're giving just what you can give. God knows that. And God understands that. And when you do it with a right attitude, it means it's just as much to him as the individual that can write a thousand dollar check amen it doesn't even miss it it's never the amount that matters to god he says hey if you'll give i'll bless you i you don't have to worry about the amount i'll take care of you he said i'll supply all your needs according to the riches that i have amen Amen. Let me just go along through here real quick. Amen. In one commentary, Gil says, Second Corinthians 9, Every man, according as he purpose in his heart, which is not to be understood of the quantity or any set sum he is fixed upon in his mind to give, but of the quality or nature of giving or the manner in which he is to give. Amen. And let me just encourage you tonight. Those of you, if you're able to bless somebody, if you're able to give, rejoice. Amen. And don't begrudge others when they get blessed or if somebody blesses somebody else. Amen. You know what? It, 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 it's, if God has given them the ability to bless somebody, you ought to praise God that they can do that. Amen. So let him give of his own will and free choice. You know, 
few years back, I was on the youth committee, and uh, I, we had a little disagreement in a board meeting, Brother Waddy, because they wanted to charge all my young people like 5 or $10 at the door instead of taking an offering. And, uh, boy, that went against my grain. Now, it made good financial sense, but it went against my grain because we're charging people to come to church, and I didn't like that. That's why I had a problem with it. And, you know, I've not always been the most, um, sometimes I've been very outspoken. And on that particular issue, I guess I was. And especially when they wanted to take an offering after we charged them at the door, I said, that ain't going to happen, you hypocrites. Now, it helps when you went to Bible college with everybody that was on the board. That way you, you knew each other before we were ever anybody or anything. <laughs> calm down, man. Calm down. Okay, I'm going to calm down. But we're we either going to do one or the other. But you know what? That uh, Fiscally, it, it made sense because we had to rent the facility. And a lot of people didn't know that. You had to rent the facility. And you, you, there's things to pay there, too. But the thing is, is it's like telling folks, if you're going to come to church here, you've got to pay a certain amount. That is not how God works. That is not how God works. It has to be from your own will and your own free choice. Amen? From your heart. Because in the end, it's between you and God. Either you will open the windows for God to operate or you'll close the window that God can't bless you. And sometimes people mistake things. Sometimes, amen, individuals don't do that. And, you know, people are praying for them, so God's keeping them afloat. But they're really not living in the blessing that God wants them to live in. So let me encourage some of you. You really want to see what the blessings of God are like. Open up your hearts and your wills and let God prove himself to you tonight. Not as directed, not as force, but according to your own counsel. And determination. Not grudgingly. Not of grief. With pain. You ever watched anybody give with some pain? Anybody ever seen them make change in the offering plate? That's why I like offering bags. Back home they had offering plates. And if a certain sister, if she wanted change, she'd stop the whole procession. (laughs) She'd put her 20 in and she'd get her 10 and 5 and 5 ones. (laughs) And leave one back. <laughs> All I had is 20. I got to make change. Well, that's almost given grudgingly. You know, it's like, well, I'm going to give, but you ain't getting my 20. I'll give you one. It's like you're grieving at the parting with what is given. But you didn't grieve at Walmart. You didn't grieve at Kohl's. You men didn't grieve at Academy. Or Home Depot, you didn't grieve. Hello. They say, Brother Bum, I'm going to hurry up, get over. You see, it was the lowest degree of giving when a man in the Jewish culture gave with grief. Well, I'll give, but man, I sure don't want to give. You know who that hurts? That doesn't hurt the preacher. That doesn't hurt the church. Because you know, to be honest, we really didn't know that you were grieving when you gave. And you can look at some saints and say, man, they're so blessed. Every time I turn around, God's doing something good for them. You can probably see their attitude in giving. And if you would adopt their attitude, God could bless you. Or of necessity of force by coercion or coaction, being obliged or influenced or being commanded by superiors. Hello. You know, one of the hardest things to do sometimes as a pastor is I know that there are needs that need to be met in individuals and I don't know any other way of helping them meet their needs except for to, to ask for an offering. But when I do that, don't. 
think that I'm commanding anybody to give. I've learned this. I cannot tell God what to do, and I cannot tell the saints of, I can ask of them. Amen? But ultimately, it's your decision what you're going to do, how you're going to behave. How you're going to, so don't give out of a necessity, not, not because some prevailing entity is pushing upon you. But you should give freely and liberally. Why? For God loveth a cheerful giver. One that gives, and in the Hebrew it states, with a cheerful countenance. With a cheerful heart. Does it give you joy to give? Because your attitude in giving is going to determine whether or not God can really do something for you. Because God doesn't love a grudgingly giver or a grieving giver or one that's calculating giver. Amen? God loves a cheerful giver. And when you give with a cheerful heart, Everything that you have within you saying, Lord, I'm just going to give it to you. Amen. All this song. Oh, Lord, you know, I thank you that I have a job and I thank you, Lord, that, amen, I have a means to be able to give. And I rejoice in the fact that I can bring an offering to you. Amen. I'll be honest, after watching that gentleman give, Brother Waddy, I was tempted to tell the ushers, y'all just hold the offering plates up here. I want everybody just to come up and bring their offering. Instead of taking up an offering, bring your offering. Amen? Bring an offering with a joyful spirit. Amen. We used to, before we gave, we used to wave it to the Lord to let Him know. We, we don't do some of the things we used to do because, hey amen, I guess it got old-fashioned or out of style. But let folks know, hey, Lord, I give this to you and I'm happy about it. Hey amen. One of the reasons we sing while we give. You're supposed to be worshiping while you give. Praising God while you give. Why? Because the Lord loves a cheerful giver who looks pleasantly on the person that moves to him. Who gives parts with his money willingly and takes delight in doing good to others. You know, when you give, it's not just in the finances you give. But with your attitude towards others and serving them. Amen. Such givers, God's loves. Not, their, you know, not that their cheerful beneficence is the cause of his special peculiar love to them in his own heart. But it's because to them, amen, he sh they show their love. Through their giving. By their acts. By prospering and succeeding in their worldly affairs. And amen. You know, in the Septuagint in Proverbs 22 and 8 are these words. God blesses a cheerful man and a giver. Which the apostle refers. God blesses a cheerful man and a giver. I'm going to tell you something. You can tell the difference between somebody that is blessed and somebody that is struggling based on how much of a giver they are. Now, this is just you know, old-fashioned beans and tater kind of preaching. <laughs> but it's got good substance. And I'm telling you, church, that in our giving... Amen. And I don't have, I'm not teaching this and preaching this because this church isn't faithful in their gift. I'm teaching it to remind us. There's a reason why we tithe and there's a reason why we give. And when we do give, let's do it with the right attitude. If it's just a dollar, I'm going to praise God in giving that dollar. Because it's not the amount. Amen. It's, it's the heart that's behind it. You say, well, Brother Bumgarner, and I'm just going to, I'm going to finish on the, Brother Bum, I can't give 10%. I just can't give 10%. Okay, try God. Now, I believe a tithe is 10%, but give 5% and see what he does.
Now, for you that pay attention, don't say I'm Bob Bumgarner so we can cut our ties. No, 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 no. You know. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it's a sin. <laughs> but to those that are struggling, those that are new, those that have, have never really got into this tithing and offering, I'm encouraging you, try it. And just see what doors that God can open for you. Amen? Let's stand to our feet tonight. Let's give the Lord some praise. Lord, I thank you tonight for being in the house. And I'm asking you, Lord, through the word, let it become a part of our hearts. Lord, I know that you want us to be good stewards and good givers, Lord, with a right attitude in giving. That mighty God, that we can bless the kingdom of God and through it, Lord, be blessed ourselves. For we understand, God, that you would not allow us to outgive you. You will never allow us for, for us to outgive you, Lord. There can never be that imbalance. So I'm asking you, Lord, today, let this word be in our hearts and in our minds. That every time we give, every time we tithe, we do it with an understanding. I'm doing this as unto the Lord. Amen. And in truth, Lord. Even though I'm blessing the church, I'm blessing the ministry, I in return am going to be abundantly blessed. And I give you praise for that today in Jesus' name. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of worship tonight? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Please remember our announcements. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. And I need to meet Brother Webb with you real quickly before if you don't mind.